In this tutorial, I just want to show you how you can use the large of the small function to be able to make a bar chart that is automatically ascending or descending dynamically based on what you're trying to do. So here I have just a quick example where we have a drop down where you can select the date right here. And then base, whenever you select the date, the range of sales that are present changes to the right as you can see. And then the employees' names are just based on um, the table that's to the left. So we here, if we just try to make a bar chart right, press Control, arrow to the right, press Tab, press Enter, we have a bar chart. But as you can see, it's just kind of all over the place. It is not, um, as you would say, ascending or descending order, right? Which can be a problem. So to make this ascending or descending order, first, you want to go over to the right, make a rank column. And it's just going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, we have nine values, but however many values you have is what you're going to do. Then we are going to have a name column, which you're going to fill in last. And now we're going to have a sales column. And here I'm just going to use the small function or the large function um, to be able to say, okay, with a large function, you know, what's the first largest value? Then what's the second largest value? What's the third largest and so on and so forth? With a small function, okay, what's the first smallest value, second smallest value, what's the third smallest value, and so on and so forth. So let's just say large function, make something that is in descending order. The array is going to be the array they're going to try and the, find the values in. So here we're going to try to find these in the sales column. And then the K is going to be just the rank. So that's the first. Close parentheses. And then now we're going to lock this in real quick. Function of 4 because I'm on a laptop or F4 if you're on a PC um, to lock that in. Sorry, not the R4. That's going to be because I want that drag down. Control C, Shift, press down arrows, Control V. And as here you can see, now it is in descending order. And then we can just do a lookup to do the name. Um, you know, as we can see, the name is to the left of the lookup value in this instance. So I'm going to use the XLOOKUP function to do this. Now, quick note. The XLOOKUP function is, came out in 2019. If you're using Excel 2016, you're going to have to do an index match um, or rearrange your data to do a VLOOKUP for this to work. But um, this version of Excel, XLOOKUP works. So XLOOKUP lookup value is just the sales value. Lookup array is where you're going to try to find the sales at. So I just say this right here, um, this right here, then return array is okay where are we gonna you know what do we want to return we want to return the names we want to return the name that's based on sales and and then we're just gonna uh, all the other our, our arguments are optional so you're gonna just con uh, close it close parentheses as you can see maddie had his sales associated with 462 and we're gonna lock this lock in these two ranges real quick with our dollar signs um, to make sure that you know dollar signs in front of the rows and the column to make sure that it just is going to stay in place when you drag this down okay and now we can see it is an alphabetical order based on the name so now when you highlight this press control right arrow tab we have a bar chart that is in descending order and looks much neater than the bar chart that we had right here and as we can select change the date it is always in descending order which as you can see on days like this one right here um, it makes much more sense and the employee's name changes as well so on the first it's Bob with most sales on the seventh is Maddie and we can just kind of show what this would look like with the small function you can change this large to be small so that way it is in now descending order or in ascending order right so now it's kind of flipped and with a small function so there you have it and real quickly to show you what it would look like um, with a lookup using index match instead of a x cup in case you're using the lower a, a, your a older version of excel so that'd be index open parentheses um, so index match is just basically a match function nested inside of an index function. 
So the array is, okay, what do you want to be returned, right? The e in e equals index first parentheses open the array. Okay, what do you return? Well, in this case, we want to return the name. So there's a name. Then the match function is just going to be used to find the row number or column number that um, returns what you're looking for. So, there. so match, not match, match, open parentheses, lookup value is going to be the sales, lookup array is going to be the sales right here. And the match type is optional, as you can tell by some brackets, but more often than not, it's going to be zero for an exact match. You, you might have to toy around if it doesn't necessarily work the first time. One quick note with this um, right here, again, newer version of Excel, um, the hashtag, um, so new Excel, just kind of 365, just kind of erase and actually spill, um, just, which is why you see the, the hashtag. But just as a quick note, so function f4 to lock that in, function f4 to lock that in, and then control c, shift control down arrow, control v, um, just so you can see how you can get this to work on an older version of Excel with the index match um, if XLOOKUP doesn't work on yours. That's it. I hope you found this to be helpful. To uh, I hope you found this to be helpful. Um, and if you did, like, subscribe, comment. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.